we got something to shout about, don't we? I said we had something to shout about. Because there's only a few more grains of sand left in the hourglass of time this side of heaven, my friend. By the way, I'm going to enjoy the trip while I'm on this side. I'm just going to get a little practice along the way because we're going to do a lot of shout on the other side. We won't get tired and weary. We'll just worship all the time. We'll worship because of the precious blood that was shed at Calvary for our sin. Your sin, my sin, the sins of the world. Can we stand tonight all over the house tonight? And some may know this song.
Um, we're going to go ahead and have the Clover Youth Choir uh, to come up. And uh, <clears throat> they've been with us in a, this tent revival several years. And always a blessing. We always enjoy them. And they're such a blessing uh, to us. And uh, we appreciate them. And uh, we're looking forward to, if you hadn't ever heard the Clover Youth Choir, I promise you, uh, you're in for a blessing. Uh, as I mentioned about the tabs, uh, it's, it's important to have talent, but it's a whole lot better to have the touch. And uh, they have talent, but they certainly have the touch of God, and we appreciate them. And look, uh, I think, there we go, we're getting all the mics. All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Let's go to church just a little while. you a minute to get a crowd together and it's good to be here i'm thankful for this opportunity i was telling the pastor we haven't been able to do this in a year and see choir standing together that's a big deal and i'm thankful for that tonight Amen. i'm thankful that he can turn a grave into yeah. a garden tonight y'all worship with us
like this, and I believe that because I've lived it, and I know his word is true tonight. Go pray for me. We're all on the journey.
share a word of testimony before they do whatever they're going to do next. Uh, Crystal is uh, leads this choir, and um, her husband came home from the hospital not too too long ago, and he's still got a lot of difficulty. If the Lord doesn't touch him, they don't know exactly how this thing's going to turn out. I was watching her just throw her hands up and say, he's awesome. There's a chorus that we sang years ago that said, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. See, he's awesome in the sanctuary, but he's awesome in your situation. He's awesome through your circumstance. He's awesome in your crisis. He's awesome in anything you go through. I watched our dear brother take off his oxygen. He got home from the hospital uh, from a bout with pneumonia and COVID not too, too long ago. I uh, still on oxygen. He said, I can't sit there and praise God with this oxygen on my face. I, I took it off uh, and worshiped and praised him. I, I say, uh, he's an awesome God uh, tonight. Uh, he's awesome in this place. He's awesome no matter what you're going through. He's awesome no matter what you face next week, next month, next year. He's an awesome God tonight. Find the Lord. Hey, 
Amen. Amen. Didn't you enjoy the Clover Youth Choir? Amen. Uh, always do a wonderful job. We're going to have the Tab family come up and sing a couple songs here. See, uh, just mind the Lord and see what you uh, what you do there. Uh, most of you've heard the Tab family all week. Some of you may be your first time here this week. Uh, if it is your first time, you've missed out on a blessing here in the Tab family. Have you enjoyed having the Tab family with us all week long? Amen. Several years ago, uh, a friend of mine said, you ought to have the Tab family in. And I didn't know them. I'd heard of them. And uh, he said, <laughs> Brother, Brother John, he, he was kind of, you know, smoothing things over and saying, They're gonna be, they ain't going to hurt you, preacher, and all that stuff. And uh, they, they showed up. And every time they've ever been here, they've always been a blessing to our church. And we certainly love them. And uh, let them minister to your heart. Yeah. 
Dr. Hurt, um, I'm going to have you, I guess, and, uh, introduce you, Brad, there, or ever how y'all do what you do. And so uh, this is um, Dr. Steve Hurt, pastor of Temple Baptist Church in Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, has been there now for several years. There's a, a step over here on the other side, Brother Hurt. Makes it just a little bit easier. Amen. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just go ahead. Go ahead, Doc. We just. Oh, God will take care of there. All right. She needs a microphone. nothing in this life like walking hand in hand with the Lord. Amen. But if you're not very careful, if you don't stick with the stuff, if you don't get up every morning and acknowledge God the Father, If you get swiped in your Bible reading and praying, mm -hmm. then you'll get very weak. Yeah. And then that's when the lies start pouring in from the enemy. And if you're feeding of the things of this world and the things of the flesh and not feeding from the Word of God, in the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will listen to the enemy. And you'll get weaker and weaker. But aren't you glad for a merciful Savior? Yeah. That sees us. He comes to where we are and the condition that we're in to meet our need. And we turn back to him. And we repent. And he gives us a time and a place to start all over. Because of his kindness and because of his mercy. Years ago, I listened to the enemy. And I was so down. I couldn't do nothing but weep. But there was a time and a place that the sweet Holy Ghost yep, yep. came. And he spoke to my heart. He'll always speak to you through his word. Sometimes he'll speak to you from another believer. Or sometimes he'll speak to you in other ways. But he spoke through his word. To make a long story short, he gave me 2 Corinthians 15, 58. And every time the enemy comes against me, I quote it. And I try to remember it every day. If you've lost your joy, if you've lost your song, remember this verse, be steadfast. Right. God's looking for someone right. yes. to be steadfast yes. in living for God. Yeah. Yeah. Be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding yeah, yeah. in the work of the Lord. Yes. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Oh, yeah. 
in the Lord. Your labor is not wasted. So keep on. Keep on. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And God, as they sung long ago, God is an awesome God. And he's always there. And the sweet Holy Spirit, he prays for us. Even when we can't speak the words. Even when we're exhausted. The sweet spirit of God prays for us. Yeah. With groanings that we cannot utter. Yeah. Yeah. Let me encourage in the Lord tonight. That God is going to take care of his children. Amen. He's going to take care of us. Yeah. Praying for you sister. And your husband. Let's keep our eyes on the Lord. He's coming soon. He's coming. Be not dismayed. This mic is on. That's why they told me it's on. Can you feel it? <laughs> God help me. Uh, 
If you will, take your Bibles tonight and turn to Matthew chapter 1, and then we'll be in 2 Samuel 11 and 12. We'll go back and forth between those. I don't know when I've ever seen any more energy on a platform than I saw tonight. Hallelujah to God. Did you enjoy the Maranatha singers? Amen. Amen. Yes. In the, uh, the, the, the Clover Youth Choir. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I enjoyed y'all. Thank you, hearts. And then the Tab family. They always absolutely uh, just bring it home and worship. Now, I like people that worship. Are you like, are you, are you like that? I want somebody to just get up. Uh, and, and worship God, and, and I appreciate the talent, uh, but uh, I, I I like somebody that's that knows Him. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I'd rather have somebody that just knows Him and walks with Him than to get up and and, and show their wares. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, uh, I mean, you you can hear a good voice anytime you want to. Turn on the radio or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Sure enough, worship is few and far between, sister. You're right. Amen. And thank God for you. Amen. You three right here encourage me right here, this little trio right here. Amen. I want you to encourage me like you encourage Miss Brenda. And Miss Brenda, I'd rather hear her sing before I hear it, before I get up and preach every time if I had my way. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate And we, we lost our spouses. Uh, she and I did, I don't know, 12, 12 13 years ago. And uh, anyway, we, it's obvious what history was, amen? Yeah. And I want to bless his name for that. Thank you, Jim. I did good, didn't I? <laughs> amen? Yeah. Go figure. I don't think she sees well, but I love her. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you about a subject tonight that's uh, maybe a, a little odd, but uh, but I, I want you to I want you to hear me out, okay? Uh, the Bible says in Matthew one verse six. Matthew one verse six. David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Matthew 1, 6. Father, I pray that you would help me now. I thank you, Father, for, for Brother Kenny, for his ministry, for his family. Uh, this, this tent has seen a lot of meetings. I thank you, Father, for the way that they ministered recently at our church and the way the Tad family ministered at our church. What a time it was. Thank you, Jesus, for the people that were saved. I, I praise your name for them, Father. But right now, what I need is fresh bread from the oven of glory. Yes. Uh -huh. Lord, I, 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 need, I need for an unction from on high, Father. I, yep. I do not have what it takes to get up and do this, Lord. I am at your mercy. Amen. Completely at your mercy. And Father, these people, they are at your mercy. To be able to hear a fresh word from the, from the, from the Lord God. I pray that right now, please, I'm begging you, don't leave me up here on my own. Uh, Lord, I, I, I'm pleading with you, dear God. I, I'm admitting I do not have what it takes to do this. I must have your touch. I must have your nearness, or this is just going to be so much conversation. So, Lord, I'm trusting in you because you said, you said it plainly. You have not, you said it plainly, Lord. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Mm-hmm and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name 
he may give it to you. Yeah. I pray that tonight you may give it me. In Jesus, oh, not in my name, but in the name that has been highly exalted above every name. Yeah. I ask this in the name of the one to whom every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. I ask yeah. it in his name. I ask it in the name of the one who has leaned over and is whispering in your ear, Father, while I'm talking to you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I ask it in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. Over half of the Baptists in America have been divorced. Over half. And I would say that it's likely that probably over half in this gathering tonight perhaps have been divorced. Uh, many of them divorced of these people in America, many of, the, many of the Baptists who have divorced have done it unscripturally. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And many of the ones who have been divorced have remarried unscripturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right now is where the pastor says under his breath, my goodness, where is he going with this? But, but, but just hear me out for a moment. That's not necessarily the subject of the message tonight. But I, 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 I will, I'm telling you what caused this message, perhaps. At least it has, in, has influenced it. And that's this question. Okay, preacher. That's all fine and good. I've divorced. I've remarried and wasn't nothing right about it. Wasn't nothing scriptural about it. And then he asked, what in God's name yep. do I do now? Yep. Yeah. I'm not hearing anybody answer that question. Right. Mm -hmm. right. what, what do I do now? And the reason that preachers are not answering that question is because it's not readily easy to find in Scripture. Uh, I mean, if you start thinking about that New Testament, you might be able, you, you'll immediately think, be thinking, I, I can't think of anybody uh, in Scripture that did such a thing and, and it did it show the step by step, now what do I do now? Do I divorce again? I think we I think we can all attest that probably that's not the way to go. Right. Yeah. But for a verse for it, that might be more difficult. I'm just saying that what I'm talking to you about sprang out uh, of the of this question. At least it certainly has influenced it. Uh, David. The king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. The only thing I can find in the Bible anywhere near close to talking about what I'm about to give you is in this story. Yeah. The story of David and Bathsheba. I mean, can we safely say that David and Bathsheba did not marry right? Man. Yeah. I mean, I think we can, that's established. <laughs> I mean, you may feel bad about how you got buried or how you got together or how you broke up, whatever, but I bet there's probably not anybody under this tent that has up and murdered somebody to have it. And if you have, I don't want to know. <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, uh, I'm interested in this phrase. Her that had been the wife of Urias. Her that had been the wife of Urias. Say that with me. Her that had been the wife of Urias. Out of 40 plus people in Matthew's genealogy of Jesus, only four mothers are mentioned at all. Just four mothers. Uh, and out of all of them, only this mother has her past brought up in the genealogy. Oh my goodness, I mean, uh, only this 
mother has had her personal business put on display in Scripture to be read for the next thousands of years. <laughs> I mean, can you give a sister a break? You know, uh, I, I feel for her tonight. No name, just her past. Yeah. Uh, 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 no title, just her laundry, her dirty laundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 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 no accolades, no high five, no good job Bathsheba, no nothing. Her that had been the wife of Urias. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all of this time, it seems like uh, it, it seems like that uh, that surely it would be Mrs. David by now. Uh, Three millenniums gone, and it's still the wife of Urias. Now, if you will, go all the way back now to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 11. And I believe that God has sent me here to help somebody. And I pray, Lord, you'd make it so. 2 Samuel 11, 2. 2 Samuel 11, 2. The Bible says, verse 2, And it came to pass in an eventide that David rose from off of his bed, walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Well, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife? of Uriah the Hittite and David sent messengers why why do you send messengers to the wife of the Hittite and took her does anybody get how bleak this picture is and she came in unto him and lay with her the word lay means the most intimate relationship possible Comes in, lays. Do you get this picture? David is up late. And he did not have an iPad. Uh huh. Right. To feed his pornographic moment. Mm. I feel like a tree right there. Uh huh. All right. Yes. Yep. He, he don't have an iPad, so he's gawking out his window at that woman that once in a while comes out at the right time on the roof where he can catch her. Mm. Taking her back. Yeah. That's an ugly little passage of scripture right there, my friend. Yeah. David sent messengers, he took her, and he laid with her, verse 5. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David is alarmed. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, verse 6, And David sent to Joab, sent to his general, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite, her husband. And Joab sent Uriah from the battlefield to David. Verse 8, And David said to Uriah, Go down to the house. He comes in from the battlefield. Go down to your house, wash thy feet. David is trying to make it look like this baby, his baby, is Uriah's baby. Uh -huh. And he's trying to come up with an alibi. Uh, yeah. You ever tried to come up with an alibi before? Or don't raise your hands. Uh, but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house to see his wife. He didn't go down. And when they told David, saying, you know, Uriah never went down unto his house, and his alibi unravels. Right. right. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, isn't that pleasant? Mm -hmm. King David we're talking about. Yeah. Isn't that pleasant? The apple of God's eye. Mm -hmm. Hard to wrap your mind around this story. 
26, verse 26, and when the wife, wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. Now, look at verse 12, chapter 12, verse 15. We're almost finished reading here. Chapter 12, verse 15, 2 Samuel. And Nathan, the, the, we're talking, the preacher has arrived now. And Nathan, the prophet, departed unto his house uh, after having a conversation with David about what he had done. And the Lord, now I want you to look at this, this phrase. And the Lord struck the child. Hmm. Now that's curious. Did you hear Brother Mar in the back go, hmm. <clears throat> it didn't say some warrior struck the child. It didn't say that the enemy of God struck the child. It said, and God struck the child. What do you do when you're trying to resuscitate what God is trying to terminate? Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about David fasted for six days, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Fasted and begged God not to take this child, even though the preacher said that's what God's going to do. Begged him, <laughs> pleaded with him. And he's begging him to put life in what God's wanting to take life out of. Right. Yeah. What do you do when you are trying to, to keep going? What you're trying to keep going, God is trying to shut down. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Bible is not going to match up with your life as long as as you keep dwelling on the feel-good verses only. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I, I, I'm talking to people, trying to help people, and they can't wrap their mind around uh, what God's doing, and they can't they can't understand why God hadn't this. Or don't know why God hadn't done yes. that. Yes. It's because uh, they've been cherry picking yes. Yes. verses. And that's that's their whole religion. Uh huh. Just just cherry pick. Ooh, that verse there feels good. Uh, and God struck the child. Well, I'm not going to look at that. Good night alive. <laughs> and we are trying to concoct a God that does not exist. Yeah. I got a little big range going on. They working on okay. Uh, they're trying to. To whip together their own God. No, no, no. I don't, I don't like that. My God, we might want to be real careful about that. We, we, we got to, we got to, I love about Brother Marr, Brother Doster. They'll preach the whole counsel of God. They won't skip over such a verse. Uh, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bear unto David. God struck, you know, that is an ugly, ugly, ugly little verse. I mean, you can't deny that. It just is. Uh, you're not going to see that in the Precious Moments Bible. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you're not, Grandma's not going to cross stitch that verse on, on the pillow. <laughs> But it's there, it's real. You know, there's something I love about God. Is it, in this book, he never held back nothing. If it was nasty, he just painted it nasty. Yep. That's my God. Hallelujah to his name. Uh, so 2 Samuel 12. Very interesting. 12, 19, David said unto his servant, Is the child dead? They said he's dead. Uh, which brings us back to our text verse tonight. David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. If you're a note taker, here's number one. God will use a disgraced mother to produce royalty. 
God will use a disgraced, humiliated mother yeah. to produce royalty. I've got, I, yep. I, I got a verse for yep. it. I got, I got uh, proof for this. Good for 2 Samuel eleven twenty four. 24. And David comforted Bathsheba. And notice right here it says his what? His wife. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't deny it. Uh, this wife who had just buried one baby, this wife who had been the wife of Urias, David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her, and he lay with her, and she bare a son. She bare David another son. She bare David a second son. One is in the ground, one is in a crib. One is in the ground, one is in a crib. He went in unto her, he lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. Mm -hmm. Called his name Solomon. This humiliated woman gives birth to a Solomon. Do you follow that? This, this humiliated woman uh, gave birth to history itself. Yeah. I'm talking about gave birth to the next king of Israel and he was yeah. not a casual king either. Right. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a king of kings, my friends. Right. Uh, uh, while others were looking down their nose at Uriah's wife, God saw a noble future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, while, God, while others were looking down their nose at Uriah's wife, God saw the mother of a king. Uh, he saw uh, the mother of royalty. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that tonight? Can you process that this evening? Uh, uh, and by the way, it says, and the Lord loved her. Right. 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 Uh -huh. Somebody, uh, let me step out of the sermon for a second. Somebody beating themselves to death in uh -huh. this place. I've done this and I've done that and God knows I shouldn't have ever done that right there and I'm so full of guilt God will never use me can I tell you something if God will use a bad Sheba to produce royalty I promise you God can use you let me just say this let me make, let me make an announcement tonight did you know that God never brings up confessed sin. When you bow your head to pray in the wee hours of the morning and you absolutely feel so beat down because that same thing from the past came up again. Can I testify to you tonight? That is not God bringing it up. There's only two sources can bring it up. One is the devil because he is called the great accuser. Uh -huh. And the only other being that can bring it up is you. Uh -huh. Because if we confess our sins, yeah. did, did, did you know that word sins means in the, in the Greek it means immoralities? Mm -hmm. yes. If we confess our past immoralities, Huh? He is That's exactly right. He right. is faithful and just yeah. to forgive us of our sins. Yeah. Blessed be the name. Yeah, give yeah. God glory. Yeah. Mama, if you will allow God to comfort you like David comforted Bathsheba in close intimacy. You too can make history. Mm -hmm. hear, hear me out. Uh, if, if you will allow God to be intimate with you, like David was intimate with Bathsheba, uh -huh. you too can be used greatly. Uh, if you will allow God to invest, now think about this, if you allow God to invest royal seed in you. Uh -huh. Like David invested royal seed in Bathsheba, you too can make history. I'm telling you, royal seed. When you ask Christ to come into your heart, yeah. I'm talking about royal 
seen. Uh -huh. Set up housekeeping oh, yep. inside your bed. Bless oh, his name. Yes, uh, I want you to, uh, let me show you something in Romans chapter 4. I feel like I feel like I'm getting somewhere tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah to his name. Yeah. Chris, you ever forgive me for calling him Chris. I know he's Doctor Whatever now. But, <laughs> sure. But, but brother, <laughs> but brother Doster, you ever feel like you're up preaching and you ain't getting nowhere? Yeah. Many times. I mean, the one that just loves to hear you preach has gone to bed this morning. Uh huh. Just, uh, I mean, they out there got the mouth hanging open, song. <laughs> But I, I, I don't feel like that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, Romans 4, verses 4, 6 through 8, are three of the most impacting verses in all of Scripture. Uh, they, 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 they paint a picture. Watch this. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness, without works, mm -hmm. saying, blessed are those, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Can we say amen? amen? Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is, is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Mm -hmm. It's the doctrine of imputation. Imputation is just a big word that means transferred. Yeah. Right. Transferred. That's all it means. Uh, I, I'm talking about uh, this, this. Watch this. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness. Did you know that when that when you ask Christ to come into your heart, uh, can I pick on you, brother? I want, you to, I want you to come, make your way down the aisle, bow at the altar for me. Tell me your name. Roger. Roger. All right, Roger. Roger, just, he just got touched by the Holy Ghost of God. The yeah. Lord has moved in him. You, how many times have we seen that in our lifetime? Yeah. Uh -huh. But something we do not see physically, but happens each time, right. is that when God, the Christ himself, hung on this cross yeah. somehow down through the eons of time uh -huh. uh, he took yep. his robe yeah. of righteousness yeah. and he, he covered him up with yeah. it and now he lives in yes, righteousness did, did he earn it? no should he have it? Yeah. no except for the goodness of a God In his righteousness alone, all blessed to stand before the throne. Yep. On Christ the solid yes, rock I stand. Hallelujah. Yes. Thanks, Wilbur. Oh, Roger, Roger. <laughs> Poor Roger. He'll be called Wilbur now for the next three weeks. <laughs> it's true. But I'll tell you this, now that you're saved, the enemy brings up the dead child in your life. Yes, he does. Brings up, the, am I right? Yes. The guilt in your life. He's why they call him the great accuser. Mm -hmm. That's one of the services he offers. Yeah. <laughs> he is going to, he's going to get in your business and bring up what God's already forgiven. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now watch this. There's two transfers that were made. Two imputations that took place on that cross. One is he covers us with the robe of righteousness. Oh. But number two. He. Stand up right here. Yeah. Brother Tab. But he does this. Can I have your jacket? You have a back of your shirt, don't you? 
<laughs> All right. So when Christ hung on the cross, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to tell you how this works, but I know it happened. It's in that verse. All right. Yes. Let me read to you. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Right. Will not transfer sin. Uh, Isaiah 53. The Lord's not giving it to me. Uh, can anybody quote the first verse of Rome, uh, Isaiah 53? And bruised for our iniquities. And surely the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Right. And by his stripes we are healed. So God take put you're on the cross. Well, he's on the cross. Now my sins off of me and on him. Mm -hmm. But but hear me. That includes not just sins, all the sins when you got saved. Right. It's all the sins, period. Right. Oh, preacher, not the future sins, too. Let me say something. Yes, they were all future. You're right. Amen. 2,000 plus Amen. years ago, yeah. they were all future. Yes. Uh -huh. And now, he wears this robe. Hallelujah to God. Isn't he a good God, Sean? Amen. Amen. I need a, I need me a devil. Uh, Roger, I think you're the guy again. Come on. <laughs> Face me right here. Now here's what the enemy will do to you. The enemy will start throwing those accusations. Am I right? Yes, sir. And can I say this? It don't matter whether you've been in a, a preacher's house all your life or whether you've been at a drunkard's house all your life. Yeah. It don't matter. He still throws the accusations at you. Okay, yeah. how many of you can testify? You're exactly right. That's what yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. rest of you speaking, please. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but I want you, I want, next time this happens to you, I want you to remember that I have imputed righteousness. That's what I'm talking about. I've got imputed, I got righteousness, the righteousness of Christ has been transferred to me. Yep. And the next time he throws up accusations, can I suggest throwing up righteousness? Yes, I do. Uh, there's an old, I don't know if it's a spiritual or what it is, it goes like, well, I tell you the best thing I ever did do was when I took off that old coat and I put on the new. You know yeah. that? Yeah. Next time yeah. that the enemy throws it up in your face, yeah. how about you tell your, I tell you the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. tore the whole lining out of my jacket. <laughs> no one knows all about it. God, God knows if he can get you to stop grieving about your past, he can produce something normal, no, something noble in your future. <laughs> God knows if he can ever get you to, to stop swimming in your regret long enough to respond to God's love like Bathsheba did to David he knows, he knows, he knows he can reproduce royalty in the days ahead mm -hmm. can I say this it is vain for you Psalm 127 too. it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows yeah. Yeah. worthless accomplishes Nothing. There's no profit in staying up late and mourning over what you've done. Yeah. Right. right. There's nothing right. accomplished whatsoever in dining on your Come disappointment. On. Say, man. Uh -huh. 
regrets. I don't know anybody that doesn't have regrets. Uh, maybe if some kid gets saved at eight years old, he may not have any regrets yet, but they're coming. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regrets will carpool to work with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and if they miss you uh, going to work, they'll catch a ride with you coming home. Mm -hmm. That's how regrets do business. Uh, regrets are willing to live in a Section 8 neighborhood, or they're willing to live. Uh, regrets will live in a mansion. Don't care. Mm -hmm. That's how regrets are. Regrets will get up early and have a cup of coffee with you, won't they? And regrets will curl up in bed with you and tell you to just end it all. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, it's vain. It is, but it's vain, useless for you to rise up early to sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows. I'll give you a little piece of this. This is point two. Now this phrase, David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, Matthew 1, 6, it, it teaches us that God will use a disgraced mother to produce royalty. We've proven that adequately, I believe. And also will use a disgraced mother to produce deity. Not just royalty, but deity. Preacher, I don't know if I get that or not. Watch this. This verse in the genealogy, Matthew 1, 6, is the genealogy of Christ himself. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? I'm talking about uh, this is the lineage of Jesus. The same, this is true, you can't deny it. The same womb that once engaged in adultery can repent and carry God in her heart. Mm -hmm. The same womb that committed fornication can turn to God and produce something that God loves. And the same womb that engaged in an illicit affair may be the same womb God uses to carry the lineage of Christ. Mm -hmm. How many do we have in here tonight that are carrying the lineage of Christ? Mm -hmm. Amen. We've right. all got Christ. Right. Uh, everybody that's accepted and was the Savior and been saved, He's living in us. Right. We are carrying Him. Mm -hmm. That's why I said deity. You can, you can uh, learn to live if you can learn to live with people rolling their eyes at you. Uh -huh. God will open heaven and produce something. Yep. Yep. If you can learn to live with the snide remark, uh -huh. God can use you no matter what you do. If you can just learn to live with the gossip at the beauty shop and the barber shop, and the barber shop yeah. uh -huh, uh, God will open heaven and produce something of kingly, royal importance. You're right. Uh, long ago, someone here came out of a bad season. And you're grieving like you're still going through that season. God has sent me to call you out of your graveyard. Uh -huh. God is wanting to say to somebody, end the funeral. Uh, I have been sent to call somebody out of the grieving, the depression, uh, and all that goes with it. God is saying to someone, You've been through divorce, but I'm not done. Right. Uh, God's saying to somebody, your ministry, I know your ministry fell apart, but God's not finished. That's right. God knows what he's doing. Every mother who has ever been saved carries God the Holy Spirit in her, in her life. He also, this verse also proves there's a testimony. And I'll make this one even shorter than that one was. God could have picked a nice, politically correct woman. He could have. Mm -hmm. To carry this lineage of Christ. Could he not have done that? Yeah. That's not who he wanted. That's right. 
He wanted his Bathsheba to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, God could have chosen a squeaky clean woman for Jesus. Jesus is to carry that lineage, that family tree. It's not what he wanted. He could have used Abigail. Yeah. No. It's not the one. It's not, listen. Where sin did abound, grace, grace did much more. Amen. 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 I, uh, it's been my lot in life to counsel different ones, different females at different times, different preachers' wives. And there was one in particular, her daddy had won her husband to the Lord, this preacher's wife. Now he left her. I mean, left her in a pastorium. I'm talking about she's living in a house owned by the church where he pastored. He left, left, left her family in it. Unbelievable. And she was as busted as you could possibly get. I'm talking about completely, totally, just I, I couldn't handle life. And I kept trying to talk to her, kept trying to encourage her. She had two children. I know you, you got two children to raise. You got to hold it together. This God, God is not finished with, with you, and, and that's how the counseling went. And so she hung on. She got her kids raised. And one of those children is preaching to you tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is that testimony that I just talked about for point number three? What is that testimony? God is never finished uh -huh. with his Bathsheba's. Yeah. Amen. God is never finished with his broken, humiliated women and his broken, humiliated men too. Right. Right. Can we say bless his name for it? Tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Nobody looking around. Is there anybody in this house tonight that would encourage this preacher for a moment and say, Preacher, I needed this tonight. I needed a place to put my guilt, and I think I found it. Oh, God. Would you slip your hand up and let thank you, thank you, thank help you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. thank you, Jesus. Can anybody say, you know, preacher, I needed to be reminded, or maybe find out for the first time, that I'm wearing His righteousness. I needed to know that. Would you slip your hand up? Oh, God. Thank you. And isn't it wonderful to know Help us see. that that robe of black sin God bore it on the cross for us. I want to ask you to do something right where you sit. You say, preacher, I don't, I don't know about no robe of righteousness. I don't know anything about uh, him taking my sin. I don't know if I get all that. But I know one thing. I don't think I have what you people got. I don't think I'm ready to meet God. Oh God. If that's you, I want to encourage you to do this. And I won't point you out just like I didn't point those other people out. But if that's you, I want you to raise your hand so I can pray for you without drawing attention to you. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm, I'm scanning the crowd. Thank you, sir. Is there another one? Are there others? Hold your hand up where I can where I can see it. I want to encourage you, sir, right where you sit, not in front of everybody, but right where you sit, to have a conversation right now with the Lord Jesus Christ, with God the Father. Have a conversation with God the Father. Would you would you just say this to him under your breath, the slightest whisper? 
uh, he's omnipresent. He can hear everything, see everything. He even knows our thoughts from afar off. Would you just say to him, dear Heavenly Father, as best as I know how, I'm asking you to come into my heart right now. I know I'm a sinner. Tell him, I know I'm a sinner. You said all have sinned. I know it. I, I get it. I admit it. I, I'm a sinner. And I know the wages of sin is death and hell. I get that. So tonight, I want to remind you. You're talking to him now, not me. Tonight, I want to remind you, Father, what you said. Tell, tell him what he said. Father, you said, whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm calling right now. Tell him, I'm calling right now, best as I know how. Will you save me right now? As best as I know how, still talking to him, as best as I know how, I ask you, I'm opening my heart's door. I'm asking you to come in and spend eternity in me. Best as I know how, I give myself to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Head still bowed, eyes still closed. Very important that you know, if we deny him before men, he will deny us before our Father, which is in heaven. So it's very important that you that you do this. With, me, with, with God looking and me looking, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. God's looking. I'm looking. If you ask Christ to save you now, and you meant it, if you really meant it, I want you to slip your hand up just like you want to go right back there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Was there anyone else that prayed that? And you want to make you want to make it, you want to raise your hand before God and say, yes, sir. I ask him to In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And amen. Can we praise the Lord for this one who has Christ? so much. I'm so honored that you would ask me to come and be at your place again. And uh, what a precious group of people you have here tonight. It's been my privilege. You all come right on. It's been my privilege to preach to you. And uh, I truly enjoyed it. And uh, my heart was touched in this place tonight. Amen. Y'all give Dr. Hurd a hand tonight. But we want to take this the preacher handed me the mic. He said, extend the invitation a little longer. I want to do this. I'm not going to add to the preaching, my goodness, how good it was. But there was quite a few of you that raised your hand and said, I want to thank the Lord for his righteousness that was imputed to my life. See, if you only really got a good picture of that tonight in your heart, it ought to make you humble yourself before a mighty God to say thank you that a God so big and so mighty and so great and so wonderful would be willing to even look toward me. So here's what we'd like you to do. We would like you to gather around these altars tonight as Miss Lydia sings in a moment. And I want you just to say thank you. If you're physically able to kneel, my goodness, how precious that is for God to look at the, the creation his creation, humbling their self before him, saying thank you that you have extended your cloak and your coat of righteousness toward me and to me. Would you come and gather around these altars tonight? Would you do that? Now there's some of you that slipped your hand up and you said something about you appreciate the fact that God has cleared your guilt and that the Lord has reminded you that he can use you despite, regardless of what you've done, would you come tonight and thank him that your shame and your guilt has been covered by the blood of Calvary and that Jesus Christ is preeminent in your life now. Satan no longer has control, but you're under the leadership and rulership of the Almighty God through the person of the Lord Jesus under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Miss Liddy, would you sing a moment? Encourage the heart.
tonight. We'll never have to face judgment. <laughs> we'll not have to face the judgment for our sins. We'll only be judged for what we did in the body for Christ. Thank you, God, that my sin and turn of the blood of Calvary. scripture and when he had removed him he raised up unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after mine own heart Listen, which shall fulfill all my will if he committed adultery because God wasn't looking at the adultery it was covered by the blood the righteousness of God had been imputed and thanks be unto God David then you can finish your life doing all the will of God you can finish your life forgetting those things which are behind and pressing to those things which are before you you can still do all the will of God He'll never remember your failures. But I, I believe there were two men, two young men that said they prayed tonight. Can we just do something for a moment? Brother Steve said he wouldn't call you out, but I didn't say it. Here's all I want to do. I want you to stand up and acknowledge that you have trusted Jesus as your Savior and let this crowd rejoice. If you pray to receive Christ in this tent tonight, would you stand to your feet? Just stand up. Stand to your feet. God bless you, son. Welcome to the family of God. You will never be the same again. He imputed righteousness to your account. Somebody ought to shout with me and put your hands together and rejoice that the Lord Still redeeming sinners, picking them up out of the fiery clay, putting their feet upon solid ground. Somebody rejoice with me in the tent tonight. Hallelujah. Well, Dr. Dawson, where you at? <laughs> he got
got called doctor, so I'm going to extend that autographs to him. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that good tonight? Amen. I'll, I'll quote one verse. And Amen. The Bible said this, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners. God didn't wait for you to get cleaned up. God didn't wait for you to put a suit on. God didn't wait for you to have King James Bible in your hand before he loved you. He died for you when you was at your worst. When you was doing your nastiest. He said, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I say hallelujah. Thanks be to God for the smitten lamb. Thanks be to God for the blood that was shed on my behalf. If you're saved tonight, you ought to just thank God. <laughs> in, in, in Bible college, Dr. Hurt taught us all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, I mean, Bible truth, but in Dr. Hurt kind of way. Where would you be if the Mormons would have come by? What if the Jehovah Witnesses would have come by? You might be selling magazines tonight. You could be peddling a 10 speed tonight. But thanks be to God, somebody came by with the Word of God, told you the truth of the God's Word, and God pricked your heart, and tonight you're saved. Tonight you're on your way to heaven. Tonight all your sins are washed away. I say, bless His name. Well, praise the Lord. We got to go. We got to go. Um, I want to do this tonight, yeah, the offering. I, uh, I want to do this. Uh, tonight we want to be a blessing uh, to the Tab family. We want to be a blessing to Brother uh, Kenny, uh, Mar, and his family. Didn't you appreciate their ministry all week long? And we certainly do appreciate them. And uh, we, we're going to get some somebody to help us here. Uh, let's see here. Um, there you go, Luke. Come here, man. You see this big old fellow right here? You can't, you can't hardly miss him. Uh, he's going to have his chicken bucket. And uh, he's like me. If uh, you got a bucket and it's empty, praise God, we're going to do something about that. <laughs> we're going to take up an offering. Uh, let me get some help. Man, what is up? My man Preston is in the house. Thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate you coming. Um, Jerry... Jerry, listen, come here real quick. Jerry is a pastor up in Cooperstown, New York. Mike, Jerry's my daddy. My, yeah, Jim, Mike. I, I look at him and I see his daddy. I went to Bible college uh, and uh, just a great blessing. He's going to the going to Asia, right? South Asia. And uh, people uh, in South Asia need the Lord. 